Hey everybody, it's your girl Katia, and we're here speaking with Rebecca Stern, who made a wonderful movie called Well Groomed. It's about our favorite little animals. You know, I'm a dog person, dogs and grooming. One thing, when I saw this movie, it made me feel good. Great, right? Like and, and, and I thought, uh, talk a little bit about, are you a dog lover yourself? Do you have groomers in your life? Like, how did you say, hey, I want to make a movie about this? Yeah, absolutely. So. First off, I'm a huge dog lover myself. Um, I grew up with dogs and I grew up with a lot of cats too, so I'm kind of playing both sides on the cat v. dog conversation. Um, and I started making it mostly because I wanted to hang out with more dogs, to be honest. I had moved to New York and I didn't have a pet at the time after an entire life of owning pets and having companions. I now have a little one that's very, very obnoxious. I love him very much. Um, and I started looking for ways to do that. And also, you, you mentioned that the film made you happy, and that was kind of the goal. I wanted to find a way to spend more time with animals and to bring a little bit more happiness into my life and to focus on things that brought me a little bit more joy in living. Absolutely. Talk also about how did you find the groomers? Like, did you, were you aware, like, because layman people like me, I'm aware of dog shows, like the huge one, it's on TV. I, and I knew there were grooming contacts. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about this extra layer of, of grooming. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I had no idea about competitive creative dog grooming before I started this. Um, I found out about it just doing the research and kind of trying to make a documentary about dogs. I initially went to Tompkins Square Park dog, Halloween dog fashion show in nice. order to like check out the dog scene, right? And there, there was a lot of dogs that were kind of dressed up in outfits, and then there were a few that had like a, some creative grooming touches on them. And I was like, that's interesting. So I did a little bit more research online, found pictures of the dogs that were done for the competitions of creative grooming, and I was like, this is extreme and interesting, and I'd like to learn more. So I reached out to a friend of mine who's actually a dog publicist, because that's a thing. Uh, <laughs> and especially with the internet, with, the, with Instagram age, like dog publicity is a hot, ticket commodity um, and she was like you have to talk to these people and everyone that I was talking to kept mentioning Angela Comfy especially and I was like well then I should definitely talk to this person and we got connected online over Facebook and I was like you know do you mind if I come film with you and she was a little bit reticent at first she was like you know I don't know who you are like yeah what, absolutely what are you trying to do what do you want to say um, this is my livelihood this is this is what I like to do and I was like oh you know don't worry about it so I ended up flying out myself to Pasadena to the groom expo west there when I first started this just to say hi and like introduce myself and be like you know I'm I'm legit I <laughs> don't worry um, and really like also wanted to start the process of making a documentary because like it was really important for me to be able to know them very well um, and to kind of understand who they were as people outside of competitive dog grooming. Got it, got it. Yeah. Also, um, there is, it's not just in the United States, apparently like doing my research also I discovered there's a huge thing, like it's really huge in Japan to the fact that they come over here and even with the language barrier. Um, talk a little bit how the culture is not just like when we think grooming and that type of stuff and dressing up your dogs and think it's like little old ladies but the women in this film are younger they have businesses uh, they groom talk about about the dog grooming culture itself yeah absolutely the, so um, Kat Opson in the film actually she often teaches students that come in from Japan to learn about dog grooming basics as well as, as creative dog grooming and it's a worldwide phenomenon so there's huge bases of, of it in Japan and Korea and Brazil and the UK um, in Mexico and really all around the world and it's a growing trend as well so it's not something that is getting smaller or is like just for this like very specific niche it's becoming much bigger I was walking in LA the other day and I saw a creatively groomed dog just like prancing on by so I think it's really tied in with the dog culture generally um, I think all of us are getting more and more obsessed with our dogs each passing day and dogs are becoming more and more central to our lives it's, maybe it's an ec economic thing I don't know but it's a really easy way to like figure out how to make your life a little bit happier um, the culture and community is 
is really vibrant and it's very close knit as well. So that was one of the things that I found when I when I kind of like showed up ad hoc um, was that these women, and it is mostly women, um, especially in the creative grooming circles. Although in grooming generally, there's a, a little bit more of a male presence. They just really loved each other, and they wanted to find a, a community of people that they could go and like kind of celebrate that with and meet people who otherwise they wouldn't have in whatever small town they live in and it was a way for them to not only spend more time with their animals but access the world at large and so um yeah sorry so then like the they take that in america and then they also go and to other countries so the women will go to teach classes or just compete in grooming competitions all around the world because they want to do exactly that. They want to meet people and talk to them. You know, Absolutely. How did you, um, because some people are concerned, like you, the dogs don't have a say, well, clearly, because I don't speak, but, um, you know, are they comfortable with that and, and things like that? And how did you find balance in addressing, okay, not being like preachy about it, but just touching it where you say, okay, the dogs are well groomed. They're well taken care of. They are well loved. Some of them are probably living better lives than people. And to show that, hey, this is not one of those things where um, animals are mistreated. Like there was a portion of the film where she discussed it. It's like she had a whole all those binders of what's in the, yeah. the paint and and everything. Um, how did you find balance in educating people a little bit, but still keeping it entertaining? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that I found when I went out was that I just didn't see any dogs that were being harmed okay. and so I completely understand the question and I really appreciate the question because it's people who love dogs and they want to make sure that all the dogs that they're seeing are well taken care of uh, but I just didn't see it in the field they seem they seem really happy they're really well loved they're incredibly well taken care of um, they're definitely treated better than I am usually <laughs> so, <laughs> like I and in seeing that in the field I really just decided to focus on something that would do exactly what I wa wanted to do with the film, which was to create a little bit more happiness. And so it was something that I didn't want to focus heavily on in it because it what would detract from the goal of the film itself, which is to kind of like follow women and to understand it. them and to understand their point of view. Um, yeah. I think you did a good job because in that segment, it was okay, we're, we're going to address it without addressing it, where she was like, everything I put on the dogs, when I teach, just to make sure we're using the right product, yeah. it doesn't harm it. Even when um, the other young lady was going on a walk, and people are like, well, well how, what, how do you change it? And she was like, oh, it grows out. Yeah. So I'm like, boom, question answered. For anyone, like, how do you change it? It seems also, um, is there a particular reason why it seems like, Poodles are more yeah. the ones used. Is it because uh, maybe that's just what we're used to? We usually see poodles very no, it's, poofed uh, out. So um, for creative grooming, you have to use dogs that have lighter lighter color hair because you can't use any bleaching products. Got it. Um, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And because poodles actually, their hair grows kind of like human hair or like sheep's wool almost. Okay. So they're often hypoallergenic because they don't shed very much or at all and they need to be groomed. Okay. So if you have if you're training a young poodle and you're doing it correctly, you're training them to be groomed from a very early age because they need to do it all the time. One of the things that I did see in grooming shops was oftentimes poodles coming in who hadn't been groomed for a really long time and it was very clear that they were very uncomfortable. So part of this is like training the dogs and then knowing that the dogs are really enjoying being groomed and they feel much better afterwards and you can kind of see them run around and enjoy. Yeah, I mean you definitely see the relationship between the owner and, and the dogs and the dogs are like, you know, dogs can sense energy, at least I think they can and they know when your vibe is 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 positive and there's a lot of affirmation and also it's attention which yeah, dogs they love it, love it. You know, <laughs> like you're right there and you're getting everything blow dried and all of that in the end what is it other than people being happy like when they see this film right yeah. what do you want them to get out of it I want them to get out of it a, a, a chance to experience a world they wouldn't have otherwise, which is one of the, my favorite things about seeing documentaries, as well as a chance to really think about and dive into creative passion. I think it's really exemplary that these women have found something 
some way to creatively show what they can do in an environment that otherwise they wouldn't have been able to. They've taken tools that they have at their fingertips because they didn't have any other tools necessarily to make the artwork or because they wanted to make art this way and they've done it. So it's, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to do to take time out of your life to do the thing that makes you feel creatively fulfilled. Um, and so I'd like audiences to leave and think a little bit more about what that creative fulfillment means and does for us as humans. Absolutely. And um, I know the film is playing here at Sundance, and best of luck to you. Is it your South competition? By, yeah. yeah. Is it not Sundance? Uh -huh. <laughs> you can tell that I, oh my but God. But you know, next good. film. Yes. <laughs> the film is playing here at South by. And um, so what are the plans as far as the rollout after yeah. you do your festival, Sarkis? So we already have quite a few festivals lined up. Um, Cleveland is announced, and then we'll, uh, quite a few more will be announced this month. So I couldn't say. But it's looking like a really robust festival run for the film, and then everything else I'll let you know when Absolutely. I can. Absolutely. Yeah. If there's social media, let our listeners know where they can get, like where they can follow the process. So when it does come to a festival in their town, they come and out, come out and support the film. Absolutely. You can always find us on Facebook at World Group Movie and on Instagram at World Group Group Movie. We post all the time. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I appreciate it. And this has been a lot of fun. Thank you.